So what we have, Liz knows, is we have a foci of 0, 1, 4, 1, and a major axis of symmetry of 6. So the first thing I always like to do, especially when they're, what they're asking us to do, is find the standard equation. Uh, for this ellipse. So the main important thing is I want to kind of see, am I dealing with one that's going to be horizontal or vertical, right? Because those are two different formulas, correct? Mm -hmm. So the first thing I like to do is try to see if I can get an idea. So I have 0, 1, and then 4, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. So ladies and gentlemen, if I have my two fold guys like this, is that going to produce an ellipse that's going to be vertical? Or horizontal? Huh? Well, let's take a look at it and what they have. If it's horizontal, remember, you have the center, the foci, and the vertices. The center, the foci, and the vertices all lie in the major axis of symmetry. If it's a vertical, remember, center, foci, I'm sorry, vertices, center, <laughs> vertices, foci, center, foci, vertices. So, it's either one of these two. If I only know these two dots, what does it have to be? Is the is the horizontal. It's horizontal, right? Because these two, your two foci, lie on your major axis. So now we know that my major axis has to be horizontal. So, that's very important because now I know at least the formula is going to look like, which is x minus h squared over, since it's horizontal, we know that my value of a, which is my, uh, or 2a, which is my major axis, though, is going to be under x, plus my y minus my k divided by b squared equals 1. Okay, so now we know that's the form we're going to use. We just need to be able to figure out what a, what b, and what y and k are, right? Y and K are going to be our center. For right now, we don't know what our center is. So let's go back and look at our two foci. Remember, when you're dealing with the foci, I don't know why I raised this, so let's go back to this. So now we know we have a horizontal, right? Okay, so we have a center, foci, and then two vertices. Now, so far, ladies and gentlemen, I've been giving you the foci. I gave you two foci, I didn't give you the center. Do we know the distance from the foci to the center? It is a distance of C, right? And is it this exact same distance? Right, it's the exact same distance of C. So, ladies and gentlemen, if I went a distance from one foci to the next was one, two, three, four, so therefore, if this distance was four, what is the value of C? Two, two right? Because your vertex is gonna be split in between your two foci. So for right now, I'll just write in, C equals 2. Therefore, my vertex is going to be split right in between them. So now I know my vertex is going to be at 2, comma 1. That's pretty good to know, right? Now my vertex is at 2, comma 1. Now we got to figure out what A is. We're given the two foci, right? When we know that the two foci, the vertex is right between them, right? And they all lie on the same axis of symmetry. So if I know that my vertex is going to split these two points, so I pretty much, you know, from going from one to another is four units, I know between them is only going to be two or two units. And then, it's, and then they both have the same k because they all lie on the same axis, right? Center. Do you mean center? Uh, center, yeah. Well, I said, what do you mean? No, I mean center. Center. You're saying vertex and not center. Oh, center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so now we need to figure out what our A, B, and C are. Well, they said the major axis symmetry is A, or is 6. So what that means is this whole length is 6. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, we talked about half of that is A. So the other half would also be A. So therefore, we can say 2a equals 6. Therefore, a equals 3, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The whole major axis is 6. We know that from 
one vertice to the, or from the vertice to the center is equal to a, so that's 2a, so therefore we get 2a equals 6. Um, so now we do c, a, but we need b, right? That's our last piece of information. We need to figure out what b is. So remember the formula that I said you had, which I explained to you guys over there, which you just need to remember, which is a squared equals b squared plus c squared. So now let's go and plug in our information we know and let's solve for b. So a is going to be 3 squared equals b squared, and then we have c squared, which is 2. So we have 9 equals b squared plus 4, subtract 4, subtract 4, 5 equals b squared. Now, you could say, oh, b is the square root of 5, right? But we don't, we don't need to know what b is. We just need to know, in this case, what b squared is. Because all they're asking us to do is find the standard form. So now, here's our standard form. Let's plug in what we know. Do we know h and k? Yes. Do we know a? Yes. Do we know b? Yes. What do x and y represent again? Why do we need, not need to figure those out? Those are just random points. X and y, yeah, represent all the points on the ellipse. So we don't have to have points in there because they represent all of them. So therefore, our final answer is going to be x minus 2, because remember the formula says opposite of h. Since h is 2, it's x minus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared divided by a squared, which is 9, divided by b squared, which is 5, equals 1. Ta-da! Uh, not for this problem, it just said to find the equation. I think on the next one we're going to do eccentricity. Wow, seven minutes.